coming out. It always looks so amazing. Star Wars Weekend is one of my favorite things. My third year hosting. It is just an honor to be back here, and I am so grateful to be with all of you now for such an amazing show. Now, my name is James Arnold Taylor, and I'm a voice actor. And so people kind of always say, well, a voice actor, you're not on camera. You don't see us ever, so you don't recognize us. But when you hear us, you recognize us. So the question I always get is, have I heard you in anything? Well, I tell them, <clears throat> on TV, I'm, of course, Jedi Knights, Obi-Wan Kenobi, and Master Pro Cool. But I've also doubled for Michael J. Fox, Stuart Little, and Milo Thatch. Yeah, that's good. And Leonardo the Ninja Turtle. Fred Flintstone. Johnny Test, who's totally awesome. I'm even a strawberry in any way, yeah. The voice that tells you what's coming up next on Animation Domination. And Disney's so random. I've even been the guy that would have gotten away with it if it wasn't for those meddling kids. <laughs> Sometimes uh, I'll do video games like Ratchet from Ratchet and Clank, Tina's from Final Fantasy X, your friendly neighborhood Spider-Man, Great Scott, Young Doc Brown, Captain Jack Sparrow, Willy Wonka, Prince Charming, Gingy the Gingerbread Man, Voice of Minions, and Transformers. Now other times there's celebrities that come in and they're not able to do their voice, so I'll do it for them, like David Spade, Shia LaBeouf, Christian Bale, <laughs> Nicholas Cage, Justin Timberlake, <laughs> Jay Marshall, oh hey Robert Williams, Andre the Giant, yeah. and it's crazy I've even done Christopher Walken. <laughs> <laughs> and what a voice actor does, please come back right here to the Premier Theater at 6.30 for my show, Obi-Wan and Beyond. In that show, I give you a little of what you just got there, as well as 200 different voices. Talk about my life as a voice actor. It's a lot of fun. I hope to see you back here. But we have so much fun right now. Are we excited? We have some awesome guests, some awesome Star Wars Weekends alumni, two of my favorite people. We've got Boba Fett, Jeremy Bullock. Yes, pretty good. And Ray Park. I want to bring them out, but first, there's two other guests that couldn't make it that, that wanted to give you a welcome, and so let's take a look at these screens. Check this out. I'm sorry I can't be with you at the Star Wars Disney weekend. I'm sure it's a total blast, and everybody's having a good time. I can't come because I'm working on the new Star Wars movies. I'm forbidden to tell you. So hopefully we'll be able to keep it a surprise until you get to see them in the theaters. But they should be very satisfying, we hope. celebrating the 30th anniversary of Return of the Jedi, uh, one of my favorite movies, and um, I hope you all enjoy that too. Uh, I want to thank you for all your support over the years. Uh, it's very important to me. May the Force be with you. Pretty cool. Are we excited then for the Stars and Saga talk show? spans five decades. An amazing performer. And well, before we bring him out, let's take a look at these screens one more time. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, Star Wars Weekends is proud to introduce one of the most distinguished actors of the millennia. Some of his finest moments were in such cinematic masterpieces as Doctor Who, Robin of Sherwood, and the James Bond 
series as that clever gadget tester, Smithers. His talents and versatility are limitless, and his ability to become a human chameleon is truly uncanny. Why, he has played an action man, a gentle man, a sensitive man, and even a radiant man. <laughs> I can't work it out, but I just feel very fortunate to be invited back because it's otherwise this place wouldn't be full. I think, yeah, I'm really grateful because, yeah. So I think we do have one or two Boba Fett fans in the crowd. Just, just a couple. You know, it is fascinating, such a, an amazing character. And how much has been, through the years, he's just become more and more of this, we have to know more about him. And it's really thanks to you, Jeremy. It's all thanks to you. No. All credit goes to you. Well, you're being very kind, but it's not really. If you look at the costume, and I'm sure everybody knows, he's got little bits and pieces, digits and funny boots and darts. The costume makes the character. It's That's, for me, that's why he's so popular. He is, a, he is a great character, but now it's been 30 years since Return of the Jedi. Can you believe it? And, and, w did you have any idea? I know you probably get this question a lot, but could you have had any idea that 30 years from now you'd be sitting here still talking about a character like Boba Fett where you weren't even seen and, and all that? It's, it's kind of amazing, right? No, it is amazing that it's still, still going on now. People who said, I've only just discovered the character Boba Fett. And he said, I think it's awesome, it's incredible, but it's just gone on and on. It, it never seems to end with Boba. And can you give us a little story behind that? What was like your first impression? Did you get like drawings of Boba Fett or did you see the costume? What was your first glimpse of him? Um, well, the first thing was, I mean, I was working in the theatre in the evening, so I, I was sort of putting the costume on and saying, oh, this looks good, the lights flashing here, but, but I must get back to be in the theatre. That was the most important thing. Although as time went on, you suddenly realised that people were saying, hey, that's quite a costume. And then you start to think, oh, do you think this is quite a costume? Wow, it's the best costume in Star Wars. So it sort of carried on, and then suddenly this, when they re-released the films, 97, that's right. when the real character came through, I think. Yeah, and, and you had some troubles with the costume sometimes too, didn't you? I mean, there was... <coughs> No, I, you're, you're very cool, you're oh, yeah. cool, don't get me wrong, but uh, <laughs> there were some issues with like the knee pads. Yeah, um, well I'm sure you've seen the knee pads on both of them. And they, they were a bit difficult because as you walked your first step, you pressed down and the Valpo just went ping and it, it shot across the room. <laughs> so there was a lot of acting of holding it like this and walking in and saying, I'm totally sorry, this is broken. It's, it's not broken, Jeremy, you just put it on the Velcro. Oh, I see, sorry. So I was a bit of a mess to begin with. And That's that not... shot, sorry. Oh, yeah. That yeah. shot, the yeah. knee pads are upside down. Oh, my God. <laughs> so I would have fired darts into my feet. Wow. So that's a, there's a little trivia right there. And that's one of those things, as, as a bounty hunter, you, you want to look cool. You don't want to have upside down. Look at Bob, his face got his upside down knee pads. Yeah, right. right, right, right. That's right. Uh, now, the costume is cool, but I think you added some cool to Boba as well with those moves. Can you give us a little, what was, what was your thought there when you saw it? Was it, you know, like, these, these moves you had that made him very but distinct? What, what you're doing is nothing like Boba Fett. <laughs> Can you teach me? Yeah, okay. Alright, um, okay, so if I'm, if I'm a bounty hunter, I'm Boba Fett the bounty hunter, and I want to do some cool moves, and I want to really make a statement when I walk into a room, what's my Well, you know, least is more. You know, least that, is more. That expression, so okay. the, the first time I had the gun, which was very heavy, it wasn't just a plastic gun. Oh, it wasn't, no. So you had the gun, and you were standing, trying to look as cool as possible. 
and they were going on and on rehearsing and the gun was getting heavier and heavier and then finally you went and I just did that. So that's where that came so from? So that's where it came from. Because it's like this really like neat thing now, but it was just because it was heavy. Well, people hire me out now to hold guns and make them look lighter. And that's another, <laughs> another little job. So, okay, and yes, sorry, yeah, sorry. have a seat. I'm sorry. Yeah. I'm, thank no, you for no. the lesson, though, and, and, and all that. Now, you had a dual role in Empire Strikes Back, though. And it's kind of an interesting role because you're fighting, you're shooting at yourself. You were Shekel. What's he on? Um, no, what you're doing is, is Lieutenant Shekel, Luke Skywalker goes past, and yeah. I'm firing there, but it does look as though I'm firing at Oh, you're not firing at you. Oh, I'm sorry. Yes, yeah, so I should have no, that, shouldn't I? But, but you're, you're running away with... Okay, so can we have, we have a clip, actually. Let's clarify it. Yeah. Let's take a look at the clip. So, okay, so there's Luke. And I want to point out some things on you. Okay. some brilliant acting on your part. There you are. You look at very cool. Very cool. And look, hey, no wires. <laughs> awesome. There you are. Yes. Look at oh, look at that. Look very nice. Oh. And what do you do? First thing you do, grab the girl and use her as a human shield. Nice move. Look at that. Oh. So I'm sorry, yes, you went up shooting at yourself. I felt very Look at nice. that, very smug. But it's not human shield. No, it's the other part I played in that, but I felt, when you see that, it's disgraceful shielding himself from everybody. So I do apologize for that, I'm normally much braver. <laughs> and how did that come about? Was that something, was that a character? It, it, it was lovely, because there's so much going on, busy people grabbing cups of tea and coffee, coffee and tea, and, and then suddenly I said, Jeremy, quick change, quick, 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 come on, come on, come on. I said, what, what do you mean? Quick, get changed. I thought, well, I'm going home. They've sent me out. Oh, go. But I was dressed in the Imperial officer's outfit, Lieutenant Shekel he is, and that, suddenly I was in this scene for the rest now, of the day. Shekel and Boba Fett. And, okay, so Return of the Jedi, we saw the demise of Boba Fett. Sorry. Okay. The Sarlacc pins. Uh, we have that video, we have some videos, it's a bad reminder for you of how it all went down. <clears throat> Boba Fett going to meet his doom. It wasn't nice. Maybe not. I'll reenact it. Okay. There we go. Very exciting. I, I think he does, because people always ask me, do you think you'd get out of the Sarlacc pit? I said, of course, he just has to mend the jetpack, which is pretty battered, and out he goes, and then we're back to another chapter. No, so he just flew out, he used the jetpack and got out. Okay. Oh, he never yeah. used the... I think that's good, but you know, there is some time, I think he did spend some time in the Sarlacc pit. Well, I, I've always said that he did, and he built himself a restaurant down in the <laughs> and a wine bar, things like that. And he collects the money off the other bounty hunters that happen to go into the side. Yeah, that's, that's, so he's done one. It's a whole spin-off. Yeah. Well, we have, we actually have some, some footage. I don't know if you've ever seen this before, but it's Boba Fett in the Sarlacc pit. So uh, let's, let's roll that. See. Uh, uh, hello. And to do it, thank goodness. I thought I was doing this thousand years of digestion alone. How did you fall in? What? Fell in? <laughs> Volunteered. More like it. You 
should have seen it. You would have dug it the most. I was flying around with my jetpack, just smoking rebels with my legs. Ba boom, ba boom, ba boom. Han Solo was all, hey, wait. And I'm like, oh, I've been waiting for this for a long time, Solo. Ba bang. The big bad Wookiee be growling in hell now. I even put one between Skywalker's eyes, right between those pretty baby blues. But then Jabba the Hutt was all, oh no, this guy's too bad, man. So then 80 Jedi showed up. I took out about 67 of them, but then 20 dudes finally flanked me. And I was like, you know what, kids? It's been real, Daddy O, but I'm not giving you the pleasure. So I jumped into the pit myself. On the way down, I was thinking maybe I should have left my party favor. Oh, I did. A thermal detonator right up there. Boom! Oh, that's awesome. Man, at least you didn't go out like a punk. Yeah. Oh, I'm glad I took a bath. Are you crying? Yo. Yeah. You know him as, as Ray, but we know him as Darth Maul. Mm. Yeah, so before we bring him out, let's take a look at these screens one more time. Remember the times when I was starving and had no money and I was angry or my mum didn't feed me on time and that's why I brought out that. And then we got that. Yeah. Right there. I'm hungry, mum. <laughs> <laughs> and then the training and, and all, and how much training is involved yeah. in a, a character like this? We, we train a lot. We, like, five days a week and mm -hmm. we're in at least 10 to 13 hours. And it's a, a bit like what I used to do for competition. Okay. I was in the gym at five in the morning and then having breakfast at eight and training again before lunch and then training again before dinner. So at this time I'm, I'm actually getting to live my dream and, uh, and I, I, I was really enjoying that. I was um, to work with the other actors. And, and then you've got makeup though on top of that. So you've got all this time yeah. training, 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 and then you've got to sit for hours while they put this makeup on too. That's, yeah, it was about, I mean, I would go to sleep. 
Because really? We just leave all the Yeah, and I got told off and I wasn't allowed to go. To yeah, because then sometimes his face doesn't look right, you know, you fall asleep, a little drool. Well, I, I, I still have my mouth open and my twitcher as well. <laughs> so, yeah, you don't want to be, I don't want to put on his makeup, he hit me last time. We go, oh, you know. And they shaved your head that you were not, you know, you weren't wearing your hair hairless at the time. No. You had hair, was that weird? Was that the first time you ever... Yeah, I, want, I wanted to do it because I, I worked in Mortal Kombat Annihilation before and I, and I was in prosthetics for six hours. Yeah. So I knew I didn't want to have glue on and, and stuck, things stuck to me. And so Paul had done a test with a, with, with a, a bald cap and it was horrible. Oh, really? Because you know, you've got, got to pin your hair back, got glue here and glue there. Yeah. So I wanted to see, if I lose my hair, I wanted to, I wanted to see where I'd look like bald. So I was, I was happy, and I heard Arnold Schwarzenegger sort of do this, so I thought, you know, okay. I'm okay. Yeah. <laughs> It'd be great, great. <laughs> well, so let's take a look. There is a, a great piece here that we want to look at and see if it takes you down memory lane. Right. Okay, look at the screens. Which I thought I wanted a faster version of what the other movies were, more energetic version. And that's basically what he gave me. And I think the key to it was is we had a good villain who was a great fighter. I always wanted to fly when I was a kid. I wanted to be like the guys in the movies. So that's how I started my martial arts. You know, I found Darth Maul, and he's been played by a guy called Ray Park, and he's very good in um, uh, like kendo and martial arts, and, and he's a brilliant gymnast. I mean, you know, he's better than I. We actually cast a villain who was a sword fighter. You know, when you have one of the characters who actually knows what he's doing and is really an expert at it, it, um, it definitely ups the ante for all the other actors to do their thing uh, as well as they can. And uh, I think it makes a big difference on the screen. We could see immediately he had the look, he had all the physical skill, um, he was incredibly disciplined, and the amount of work that this guy did was phenomenal. I mean, he put everything. He spent, you know, 20 hours in the studio every day. The hatred that comes out of his eyes, there's no question that he is the serious bad guy. The uh, makeup, which was beautifully done, instantly shows you someone who is the real menace, evil incarnate. The look of um, Darth Maul, the Sith Lord, I think it's cool. I think the makeup and the horns and the lenses and the teeth, it just can't help being naughty, you know, it just help being that character. I think we all have a bit of a dark side in us, and so I just try and bring that out in myself when I play the character. Oh, behave, you naughty boy. Oh, I'm sorry, 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 i am sorry i any thoughts? I probably shouldn't bring things like that up to a martial arts champion, should I? <laughs> After the whole naughty thing and all. <laughs> uh, to, yeah, but there, there's some uh, some times there where, now, were you like swimming? Or was there a, a time at the pool or, or jogging? Anything? None of this is. There's a couple of things. There's a couple. Of, there was one. There was one time where it was after lunch and I just had a big curry and uh, a Nicolaide wanted us to show George. The final fight. Okay. It's the, yes. And it's the fight that you see Obi Wan and my Darth Maul doing, and it's a three-two-one fight. We call it the, like one of the faster fights. But it was so humid and hot inside the studios um, that the, the aluminum poles that we used would just bend. Oh. So we were trying to calculate the move, so it didn't look like very showy, like you're going to block out here, you're going to block there. They were very close Jedi moves, you know, okay. like the, the, the strikes and the hits. So the hit I had to do was above the block that was above my head, and the pole just came bounced like I hit the pole and then bang and bent and just smacked me on the head and I just woke up on the floor. Oh, yeah. I've like, never been knocked out like that before. And George is there, and the next like get up, do it again, faster, <laughs> harder, stronger. And it was the pole's fault. You know? It wasn't my fault at all. And these these poles would be bent and crooked at the end of each fight. So Nick was kind of like palpitating. Yeah, he's like the Sith Lord, yeah. Yeah, Nick was like the master of, but, but, and then George is the master master. The master. Yeah. And, and there's another character uh, in black that, that you play that uh, is a pretty cool guy that we know as Snake Eyes. Any Snake Eyes fans here from G.I. Joe? How, how is it returning to that role and getting the costume on again and look at that. Uh, very cool. You know, it's a job as a childhood. I grew up with Star Wars. I saw Star Wars for the first time when I was eight, and it, 
inspired me to be a martial artist. And, and I played with Action Man and G.I. Joe with my brother and Funday Cast and He Man. So to actually, want, I wanted to be a ninja as a kid. I thought there was real ninjas out there that disappeared. There, there are? Actually three. And they do now, the Snake Eyes does. Yes. So, uh, <laughs> so I got to relive my childhood, you know, and be, to be Snake Eyes and not to talk or, you know, not to see my face. It doesn't bother me. I, I just wanted to be that character. Yeah, yeah ninja. That's right. Ah, oh, that's awesome. That's awesome. Well, shall we take a look at a little Snake Eyes in action? Yeah. All right. Because we can recreate it here, but I don't know. I don't want to put Jeremy and I through that. So let's take a look at the screens one more time. appreciate you both being here and you know we like to mix it up a little we've had some other things before in the past but I, I, I thought it'd be fun if we did something where I tested your Star Wars trivia <laughs> because I know there's a lot of Star Wars fans out there that can probably answer these questions very easily but can all of us that's the question can we do like twice as right with them? I don't, I don't, no you can't get help from them no helping them all right it's a little something we call prequels or sequels about this as well. No, it'll be great. Okay, here's how we play prequels or sequels. The prequels are obviously episodes one, two, and three. The sequels are four, five, and six. Even though four, five, and six came before the prequels, which were, anyways, okay, you get it. So, I'm going to give you situations, characters, things like that, and you tell me whether or not they were the prequels, <laughs> one, two, or three, or the sequels, four, five, and six. You, got, you all follow me, right? I'm confused. Okay, so, I'll give you, I'll give you an example. Uh, a character, Tarkin. Was Tarkin in the prequels or the sequels? Sequels. Very good. Who said? I, I didn't know. I'm sorry. Very, very good. good. Okay. I didn't know. That. Okay. Okay. So, okay. How about Jango Fett? Prequels or sequels? Prequels or sequels? Sequels. No, prequels. Prequels. Yeah. Prequels. Yeah. <laughs> Somebody give me a tally. Okay. I'll give you a situation. Okay. Yoda fights Count Dooku. Was it in the prequels or the sequels? Prequels. Prequel. Yoda's a little green fella. It's prequels. Very good. Okay. Good. <laughs> ah. Okay. Obi Wan says, "May the force be with you." Was it in the prequels or the sequels? That prequels. Sequels. 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 You say. You say prequels. Who's right? Oh. No. He says, "May the force be with you" in the prequels. As young Obi Wan. But he says, the force will be with you, always. In all the sequels, that's right. There's a trick question from everyone. Ah. Now I'm the one being naughty. <laughs> okay, okay, another character. Adult Boba Fett. Prequels or sequels? Not a sequel. <laughs> Thank you. We have time for like a couple more? Okay. Uh, Chewbacca. Prequels or sequels? Oh. Oh. Both, very good. All right, All right. okay, good. You guys, I think you're tied. I think you're tied. Lando. Prequels or sequels? Lando covers prequels or sequels? Sequels. Very good. And one final one, Greedo. Greedo. Is it your money? Yeah. No, no, that's not his. So, no. Yeah. He shot first. He's got the cheap shot first, right? No. Because you guys know now, 
normally we do we do these things, right? Like see the little hats, you know, because we have to uh, we have to wrap it up in a good way, you know. But I thought we do another little thing that we we call a phony photo memory. Now the phony photo memory is see, you've been taking pictures of us, but it's been pretty much just us sitting in the chairs going like this, and, and then you know, uh, you know. And um, I thought it'd be great if we posed for all of you and give you a great moment to take a picture of you to remember us. All right. So, okay, let's see. Let's see. This one, oh, that's definitely mine. Okay, right. Now. Don't touch that, Ray. And uh, Jeremy, I'm sorry we don't have a blaster. You've ever held, handled a lightsaber before? And then let's, let's hope. Okay, that one is for you. Okay, so I was thinking we need, to, we need to construct some type of circumstance here. So now you're the bad guy, but you're kind of a bad guy. No, it's not cricket. <laughs> This is what I have to deal with. Okay, so yeah, all right. We're playing with this. It's not your show. Oh, okay. Not that show. Let's play it later. Okay, so how about, let's see. Oh, how about if we, we reenact your shekel roll? So you come over and grab me like I'm Princess Leia. <laughs> and Any alternative Princess Leia's? <laughs> okay, you come over and you block yeah. yourself with me, and then you're like going to come in like a kick. You know, like you're coming at me, and, and then, well, okay, like a big, yeah, something. And then, okay, snap away! Let me do that again. Wait, 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 okay, ready? Okay. Let's try, I'll very good at that. Oh, very good. Yeah, what do you think? Oh, what do you think? Yeah, that's fair. Okay, okay. Oh, that it? That's a phony phone number, they did it. Okay, great. Okay, that was good, that was good, all right. Oh, anyway, that? That's time, fun. time, all right. But oh, don't sit down, don't sit down, don't sit down. You know, we normally, we do our little, our little yeah, ending, that's right. but sure. really, we need, it's Star Wars weekends and Disney, we need to embody both of those things. And the only person I can think of that embodies both of these true elements, Disney and Star Wars, is of course, the iconic, the legendary, let's bring him out right now, Jedi! close the end of the Stars of the Saga show? It would be my pleasure. All right, awesome. Okay, well, uh, uh, how about a little music, maestro? Now it's time to say goodbye <laughs> to all Closing thoughts for us, Jeff? Oh, I, I sure do. May the